Hi folks, this is Jason, and I uh, hope you're okay today. Uh, we're going to be looking at the issue of, is the Bible uh, the Word of God? So without further ado, let's come before the Lord and ask His blessing. Um, Father, we ask for your forgiveness today, and we acknowledge our need of your grace and need of your forgiveness. And Father, we confess all our sin and all our foolish ways and Father we praise you and thank you for this day and we thank you for your grace and your blessings and so Father we give you the praise and we give you the glory today and Father we pray that you will bless as we look at your word today in Jesus name Amen so first of all um, the Bible teaches that it is the Word of God if you turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3.16, it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. God who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets as in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir over all things through whom he has made the world. Now it's important to understand what the Bible is. It's made of six it's written by many different authors around about forty and it was written over a period of about one thousand five hundred years. Now this is the point and you need to get this very clear that the Bible is one story it has a unified story that is miraculous within its its for, with it that is a miraculous thing to contemplate think about that from 1450 BC to 90 AD you have about 40 writers philosophers scholars poets shepherds all sorts of writers writing from different places, different areas, different cultures um, from Africa, Asia, Europe different languages, Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic <coughs> many different writers, etc. and yet it has a unified whole that has to be considered as important from a skeptical point of view the Bible is a book that has to be taken as unique. There are at least at least six hundred prophecies that have been fulfilled in the New Testament uh, in 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 the in the whole of the Bible. Um, we see the Bible show. The faults of its own people in Genesis chapter 12 11 13 we see the sin of uh, one of God's servants in Deuteronomy 9 24 we see the sin of I mean, chapter 11 12 we see the sin of David and his adultery and we see the faults of the Apostles in Matthew 8 verse 10 26 we see dishonesty um, not sorry, not dishonesty, but um, a lack of showing true Christianity in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 11. And the Bible is unique because it shows the faults of its own people. And that is an important thing to consider. The question of the Bible, um, it came together in the Old Testament read right about 300 BC the New Testament um, was written in Greek um, and kind of confirmed right about 375 AD first about 1382 AD um, that was by uh, John Wycliffe, you had uh, the Gettysburg Bible in 1554 and the Geneva Bible in 1560. 
some ideas about why the canon was accepted is did the writers with the, the uh, authority in terms of being chosen as a prophet uh, were the were the writers confirmed by what God did was the message truthful did it have the associate power of God and then the people of God did it accept him there were other criteria for the New Testament in terms of um, application for example, were the books by an apostle or supervised by an apostle? In Exodus chapter 4, verse 1 and 9, uh, we see God uh, calling Moses. Um, so let's turn to Exodus 4, verse 1 to 9. Exodus 4, 1 to 9. But Moses protested again, Luke, they won't believe me. They won't do what I tell them. They just say, the Lord never appeared to you. Then the Lord asked him, what do you have there in your hand? The shepherd's staff. Moses replied, etc. God was with uh, the people who wrote the books. <clears throat> Um, and in these books, God will not lie. Hebrews 6.18, it is impossible for God to lie. The early church fathers made it clear that they would only receive that which was of the word of God if it was confirmed by the apostles, confirmed by the prophets. The word of God is... A living word it's a powerful word uh, Hebrews 4 12 uh, we're not just dealing with any old book here we're dealing with the Word of God Hebrews uh, 4 verse 12 for the Word of God is full of living power it is sharper than the sharpest knife cutting deep into our innermost thoughts and desires it exposes us for what we really are nothing in all creation can hide from him everything is naked and exposed before his eyes this is the God to whom we must explain 2 Timothy 3.17 2 Timothy 3.17 It is God's way of preparing us every way, fully equipped for every good thing God wants us to do. So the Word of God equips us um, And the word of God is treasured by God's people. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2.13 For this reason we also thank God without ceasing because when you received the word of God which you heard from us you welcomed it not as the word of men but as it is the truth, the word of God. In the Old Testament there are 24 books written between um, Sorry, the canon accepted round about 300 BC to 150 BC. Within the writings, the writings, prophets, and law. Um, the Old Testament was also written in as the Septuagint uh, in 250 to 150 BC. Jesus uh, confirmed the Old Testament in Luke 24:44 that all things must be fulfilled 
which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Matthew 23, 35, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah. The canon can be established by looking at writers such as Philo and Josephus who, who tell us what the canon was. <clears throat> In Matthew twenty six fifty six, the Lord says, But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. He saw the word of God, uh, the Old Testament as the word of God. Uh, John 5.39, which testify of me, i.e. the scriptures, John 7.38, as the scripture has said, John chapter 10.35, the authority of scripture. Um, there were other writings uh, that tried to get in with the Old Testament. Um, the early, some of the early church fathers spoke out against the Apocrypha. Origen, Cyril, and Athanasius, and Jerome uh, are scholars of the time that rejected. The reason why the Apocrypha don't stand up to the Old Testament is there are problems with the accuracy of historical information there are doctrines that are not correct. Um, the style of the writing is not a high quality compared in the same quality as the Old Testament. Um, the New Testament canon was early on used by the early church fathers. Polycarp 115 AD, Justin Martyr 100 to 165, Irenaeus 180 AD, Clement of Alexandria 200 AD. Uh, we have Athanasius who provides the list of 27 New Testament. Um, for the Old Testament, 394 times it states that it is the Word of God. In the New Testament, we have 2 Peter chapter 1, 20, 21 that says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So there's quite a lot of Scripture that teach about the Bible as the Word of God in terms of the Old Testament and we could go into a lot of teaching of what Jesus says about the Old Testament. Um, Matthew 22 40 the Lord says and these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets showing you he, he loved the Old Testament. What about the New Testament? Well, Matthew 28, 19, 20, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. They were told to teach what Jesus stated. Mark 13, 31, he says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the early church was given the authority to write, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. John 15, 26, 27, it says, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me, 
and you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Jesus in Matthew 4.4 4 shows the, the Bible as authority. In Matthew 5.17 it will never be destroyed. In John 10.35 the Bible is infallible. In Matthew 22.29 the Bible has no faults. And in Matthew 12.40 has is historically correct. Uh, Matthew 19.45 the Bible is scientifically correct. And Matthew 15.3 the Bible as ultimate priority. Um, we can trust the Old Testament. The textual transmission has been well preserved. Um, we have about 700 Hebrew manuscripts. Uh, the Cairo Geniza, for example, from 1890, the Septuagint Greek translation. Um, from the 3rd to the 1st century uh, BC and then the Dead Sea Scrolls um, from the 3rd century so the Jewish scholars uh, were very meticulous in the writing um, The Old Testament has been confirmed not only in its um, documentary, um, in its uh, textual faithfulness, um, in other words that the text hasn't changed over time, but has been shown to be historically accurate. Um, we see Sodom and Gomorrah mentioned and that's already been confirmed by archaeology. Uh, Joshua 6.20 talks about the walls of Jericho falling down, that's been verified. Uh, Henry M. Morris says it is no longer possible to reject the substantial historicity of the Bible at least far back as the time of Abraham because of the remarkable discoveries of archaeology. Uh, historical reliability of the New Testament we have um, we have lots of historical findings we have <clears throat> who live um, I'll just check sorry Yeah, so the Pool of Bethesda um, has been found um, some time back, and we could go on and on and on at the amazing historical finds that prove the Bible to be correct. That's just the way it is. In terms of the Greek manuscripts, we have about 5,600 uh, ancient manuscripts that show that the Bible has been set, um, saved. We have about 10,000 Latin Vulgates, about 2,000 Ethiopic, about 4,000 Slavic, phenomenal amount. John Warwick Montgomery says to be skeptical of the resultant text of the New Testament books is to al allow all of classical antiquity to slip into obscurity for no document of the ancient period are as well attested bibliographically 
as the New Testament. Homer has about 643 surviving copies. Compare that to the over 5,000 uh, ancient manuscripts and 20 odd thousand more manuscripts beside that. And uh, we can go into the Rylands Library, MS 125 AD, of John's Gospel, the Bodmer Papyrus 2, 150 to 200 AD, the Chester Beatty Papyri 200 AD, Codex Vaticanus 325 to 350 AD, the Codex Sinaiticus 350 AD. These translations and texts were written in many different languages. Um, we have Syriac New Testament translated 150 AD, Latin translated in the 3rd century, Coptic in the 3rd and 4th, Armenian Gothic in the 4th, 5th, Gregorian 5th century. And we could go on and on and on. Over 19,000 manuscripts. Um, also, we have the quotations of the early church fathers of the New Testament. Over 86,000 quotations. 86,000 quotations of the Bible uh, in the early church fathers. Uh, the Bible has no contradictions in it. Any contradictions that you might present can be resolved. Um, Clement of Rome, 95 AD, used the scriptures Ignatius, Polycarp and Tatian. Historical information is verified by outer historians of the New Testament. Tacitus, first century historian, wrote Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most exquisite torture on a class hated for their abominations called Christians by the populace Christus, from whom the name had its origin. Nelson Gluck on archaeology. It may be stated categorically that no archaeological discovery has ever controverted a biblical reference. Um, F. F. Bruce, archaeology has confirmed the New Testament record. The Bible has a number of prophecies, 300 and plus messianic prophecies in the Old Testament. So we've seen that the Bible teaches that it's the Word of God. We see that it, it's testified by manuscripts and um, it says in 2 Timothy 2.2 2, and the things that you have heard from me among many witness can you will be able to teach others also. So what are my uh, conclusions here? Um, well, I think that the Bible claims to be the Word of God, and I think that we have to be willing to investigate that. Um, the most important thing to remember, I think, is The scripture speaks for itself, that we don't need clever arguments, that scripture has its own authority and its own power, and all we have to do is unleash it. We don't have to defend a lion, just unleash the lion. The word of God is pure and steadfast and is an anchor to the soul. Um, and I remember some of the seminary professors critiquing the Bible and it was very difficult to cope with and I remember listening to a talk um, and basically um, the talk was
sorry I'm just um, I, uh, I'm just getting tired um, just uh, just come back to that sorry about that just getting really a bit tired Um, well, I think that the Bible claims to be the Word of God, and I think that we have to be willing to investigate that. Um, the most important thing to remember, I think, is the Scripture speaks for itself. That we don't need clever arguments. That scripture has its own authority. And so yeah, so uh, I'm just getting my thoughts back there. I, my mind went blank. I nearly uh, fell asleep then. I'm just, it's just a bit late and a bit tired. Um, yeah, I was at seminary and I used I used to attend class and part of seminary was to criticise the Bible. Believe it or not, the scholars would actually rip it. And so I, I've I've gone to seminary. I've gone to two seminaries, and you've had I have had to read lots of books where they attack the scholars attack the Bible, and I can honestly say that the Bible is a very powerful book. You can't really get to the bottom of it. You can't really get to the depths of it. Just the Gospel of John alone is phenomenal and you just can't get to grips uh, with it um, it expands your mind it refreshes you renews you and it opens your way to heaven and um, as someone who's studied under many many uh, scholars and lecturers um, in theology and has listened to and studied many critique the Bible I can honestly say that their opinions and ideas soon go out of fashion. But the Word of God will never ever go out of fashion. It has a power that cannot be controlled by any nation or anybody. A power that if you unleash in your life will radically change you. So I'd encourage you to um, look into these things. Um, I'm going to recommend you some books that you can read. I think um, <clears throat> I think uh, if you type in monogism, 
the inspiration of scripture. Um, you can read uh, the whole of A. H. Hodge's book um, online. Um, and uh, there you'll get quite a lot on what scripture is, why we have scripture. And uh, this is a, an incredible, I think this would be an encouragement to you really. So yeah, uh, A. A. Hodge, Outline of Theology. Yeah, um, have a read of that. That will really help you in understanding um, in understanding the Bible. So, is the Bible the Word of God? Well, it claims to be the Word of God. It has a unified message which was written over thousands of years by, well, at least 1,500 years, by over 40 authors, different cultures. It's got a historical veracity, historical accuracy, and its prophecies have come true. And just for those reasons alone, I believe the Bible, like I said, I've read a number of books. I've read um, books by... Uh, Jerome Bars, many of these uh, clever Oxford scholars that critique the Bible and there's nothing like the Bible, there's nothing like the Word of God and um, a lot of people doubt the Old Testament these days but if Christ believed the Old Testament and he's the Son of God then why not you? So I hope that's been a blessing to you. I'm going to close in prayer and thank you for listening. Father, we thank you uh, for your goodness and your love and your grace and we give you the praise and we give you the glory and we give you the honour today. We thank you that you are our God and we give you the praise and the glory. Pray that you would be with us now and may we know your peace and joy. May this video be a blessing in your name. Amen.